Dear colleagues, my name is Eriko Slurandakis and I welcome you to this short introduction video about millimeter wave IC passive devices and circuits. It's actually a journey from lumped to distributed elements. When it comes to IC characterization, we are talking about on wafer probing and measurements. The coplanar probe, as shown here in cross section, is simply the interface between the coaxial measurement equipment and the planar integrated device under test. In a typical ground signal ground configuration, also called GSG configuration, the AC signal is applied to the signal pad and the coplanar ground pads provide the current return path for this excitation scheme. On the lower right we see a typical RF transmission and the reflection response for a GSG probe. With a typical insertion loss of about 1 dB at 60 GHz and return loss of about 20 dB at 60 GHz. For on wafer device characterization, a probe tip calibration is essential prior to any measurement on chip. A probe tip calibration is the mathematical procedure that moves the electrical reference plane from the measurement instrument to the coplanar probe tips. The calibration is performed with a well-known set of structures called calibration standards similar to what we know from the coaxial setups. On wafer standards, as shown here, are planar metal patterns like the open, short, load and line, which match the probe tip configuration. In our example, a G S G configuration. A variety of probe tip algorithms is available for moving the electrical reference plane to the probe tips. Here we are investigating the LRRM, SOLT and TRL calibration algorithm. After a successful calibration we typically use a validation measurement like this open stop one port measurement, where after the probe tip calibration we are looking at the reflection coefficient captured at the reference plane right at the probe tips. As we can see here, the open stop performs as expected since the reflection coefficient is moving inwards in a clockwise direction with increasing frequency. And all shown calibration algorithms yield consistent results. It's time now to talk about the proper choice of the semiconductor process. For passive devices, we will focus on the back end of line, also called bell of the semiconductor process. The back end of line consists of multiple metal layers interconnected by, vi by vias which are embedded in multiple dielectrics. The entire stack is built above a semiconductor substrate. Here on the left we see some scaled back end of line cross sections of various CMOS technologies, starting from 65 nanometer CMOS down to 28 nanometer CMOS. We can easily identify that the number of metal layers, the conductor thickness and their height from the substrate can vary largely between processes. It is therefore critical to understand the back end of line and the electrical limits imposed on the passive devices. On the right we see a typical transmission line design for on wafer probing in GSG configuration at both ports of the transmission line. 
This design is part of a larger CMOS test chip in 40 nanometer technology. Here we see a parametric transmission line analysis and the associated electrical metrics. On the right we see typical IC transmission line layouts and their corresponding cross sections. From left to right we see various types of transmission lines like the coplanar waveguide in GSG configuration where signal and ground planes share the same metal layer. In the middle we have the coplanar waveguide with an additional ground plane below the signal path. And on the right the shielded coplanar waveguide where the lower ground plane is a shield structure rather than a massive ground plane with a solid metal. On the lower part we see the fundamental transmission line model consisting of the unit cell of length delta L with per length metrics such as the series inductance and series resistance as well as the shunt capacitance and shunt admittance. The most common metrics for transmission lines are the characteristic impedance Z, the attenuation constant alpha and phase constant beta. Here by simple graph analysis we can show how these transmission line metrics are varied by the circuit elements R, L, C and G. On the left we see a parametric analysis of how the transmission line matrix change with varying geometry parameters. From the cross sections we can see the width over spacing ratio which is used on the x-axis for the parametrics analysis. For each transmission line type we witness how much the metrics change while sweeping the width over spacing ratio. It can be easily seen that the, that the characteristic impedance changes with a W over spacing ratio and the used metal layer. This is expected since by changing the metal layer we change not only the electrical properties of the metal but also the height from the lossy silicon substrate. By comparing the transmission line matrix we see that the shield the shielded coplanar waveguide exhibits the lowest loss and highest phase shift and by that it exhibits a size reduction potential for on-chip transmission line design since the desired phase shift can be achieved by using a shorter physical length of the transmission line. This is the so-called slow wave transmission line effect. Thank you for your attention. I look forward to introducing you further to the world of millimeter wave IC passive devices and circuits.